Well, the price of gold has run up to record highs this year, but our guest today warns that despite the strength, there may be reason for caution. Joining us now is, to discuss is Daniel Galley, Senior Commodity Strategist at TD Securities. Daniel, thanks very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, so we have gold in your record highs, but your research shows that the most recent leg of the rally has been more closely tied to a lack of selling rather than buyers. Walk us through that. Yeah, you know, it's interesting to see the evolution of how investors have positioned themselves in gold since the start of the year. We actually started the year, and I think we discussed this, Anthony, um, right around January. We started the year with a historical underpositioning from macro funds in gold. That was on the basis at the time of a higher for longer thesis, uh, a resurgence in inflation, which lasted until about April, uh, which actually kept most macro funds net short in gold. The bulk of the recent buying activity has actually been uh, since the last two misses in the non-farm payrolls report, which brought forth the idea that um, we were at a potential tipping point for the economy if the labor market or if the momentum in the labor market's weakness was going to persist. So most of the buying activity actually occurred um, from July and over the months of July and August. What's interesting is that since the Fed actually cut interest rates and surprised markets with the 50 basis points cut, inflows into gold have slowed pretty significantly. We haven't seen that much buying activity into gold. And that goes back to this idea that we've brought up before that actually there are pretty significant signs of buying exhaustion in gold. We see signs of extremes in um, several cohorts positions today. Okay, and what about central bank buying? Because that has been one of the, the things that have influenced the price of gold. Is that still steady? What, what are you seeing there? Yeah, so great point on central bank buying activity. It, in fact, it's probably one of the reasons that macro funds feel uh, comfortable holding bloated gold positions because they feel that they have another cohort that is structurally buyers of gold and that provides them with a potential exit um, if they were to need for one. Um, central bank buying activity, if you track it, is actually at its lowest levels of the last five years. Okay, why is that? Well, I think central banks are still buying, but they don't buy, they're not buying at the same extent as they have in the past. And there's a lot of arguments to be made that they've front loaded a lot of their buying activity in the early months of the year. On a six month moving average basis, it's actually trending near the lowest levels of um, the last five years. So uh, not substantial support from gold. Okay, so given that backdrop, what's the risk here for gold? I think the risk is of a positioning washout, really. Right? We spoke about macro fund positioning today. That is the cohort that we think is particularly vulnerable. Right? Since the Fed cut rates by 50 basis points, we've actually seen long-end U.S. rates rise. We've seen the U.S. dollar, which everybody was thinking was going to was... go to zero, <laughs> actually turn around and, and post a pretty notable uh, performance. We've seen equities rally to new all-time highs uh, just as of this morning. So nothing in the cross-asset space actually screams of recession risks. And yet the extent to which macro funds are positioned in gold is more analogous to previous recessionary episodes. So uh, their positions are vulnerable in our opinion. They're not the only ones. We also think that um, Shanghai traders have been one of the primary uh, buyers of gold in 2024. Most of that buying activity was probably related to currency depreciation fears. They were trying to shelter uh, their wealth from potential currency devaluation concerns earlier this year. And also from what you'd call a TINA trade, which is uh, an acronym for there is no alternative. If most of Chinese consumers' wealth is actually sitting in real estate, well, real estate prices were declining. A good chunk of the remainder is in equity markets. Chinese equity markets were declining. But the situation is now starting to reverse, right? We have had a pretty significant stimulus package announced in China, which has bolstered Chinese equities to you know, be one of the outperforming assets uh, across the world. Now, so what I'm trying to say is they now have uh, alternatives that they didn't necessarily have before, and yet their positions in gold haven't really been challenged. Uh, the last piece is what is typically the dominant speculative force um, in commodities markets, which is what we would call CTA trend followers. These are algorithms that typically trade on the basis of uh, trends, historical price patterns. And they're, they've been sitting on a max long position size for several months now. So from several cohorts, you actually see signs of exhaustion, and these positions now are starting to become challenged. 
Okay, I've learned something new, the Tina trader, something I'm going to keep <laughs> in mind. Okay, so how do U.S. interest rates play into all of this? Well, U.S. interest rates are typically very relevant, particularly for Western investors and the way that they think about gold. Right? Western investors typically see gold as a zero-coupon, infinite-duration bond, meaning, um, or for the reasons uh, that that might be the case is because it does have some duration risk. There is you know, an impact from Fed cuts on what you would expect um, for gold. Um, but at the same time, there is no maturity to that. What that implies is that gold should have a more convex relationship with interest rates, such that a one percentage decline in the federal funds rate might have a bigger implication for gold prices than it would for a five-year bond, for example. That's how Western investors have historically looked at gold, and um, they also account for inflation in, in this assessment. The reason why I bifurcated and specified that that's how Western investors look uh, at it, how they look at it, is because over the last several years, Western investors haven't been the primary cohort driving gold prices. We had seen a very significant shift from um, what typically is driven by Western investors to Eastern investors, namely um, you know, Chinese traders, Indian physical traders, and so on and so forth, and central banks. But again, those sources of buying activity have started to dissipate. Asian physical markets are actually on a buyer's strike at the moment. There's absolutely no sign of strong physical uh, market demand for gold. And so the marginal buyer or seller for gold has now shifted back to the West. Okay, and I, I know you touched on the U.S. economy. How would a soft landing versus a hard landing have an impact on gold prices? That's you know, a very significant question. Hard landing is typically associated with, you know, another word for that is a recession. Uh, typically, that is good news for gold because capital seeks to shelter itself from wealth destruction, lower equities prices, um, and so on and so forth. And gold tends to benefit from that. Uh, in recessionary episodes, you would also expect a much more aggressive Fed easing cycle than what is currently priced today. And so uh, it, it would really be what could juice Western investment into gold. Soft landing is a trickier question. And I say that because from one angle, you could make uh, the argument that if the Fed is easing in what is otherwise a pretty decent economy, then uh, it might attract capital into gold regardless, because there are some concerns that um, uh, the Fed is losing its credibility in doing so. The other argument you can make on a soft landing is that uh, actually, if that is the scenario that we're discussing, the Fed is cutting uh, interest rates in a pretty decent economy, then maybe you'd expect capital to move to more productive assets than gold, than just sit in gold, right? Uh, and that would actually potentially be a catalyst for lower gold prices. So that's a trickier um, question 